Hey, what is going on YouTube? AA Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, do we have a video and a ship review for you guys here today? The Carl the 14th Johan, aka Carl the 14th here, is the newest campaign ship to come to World of Warships Legends. And oh my, she is an absolute bruiser. Definitely not the best guns, but with the complement of torpedoes, secondaries, and armor that this ship offers. My very first game, which you guys will see here for our first look video, is is a lot of fun, and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this ship. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and look at the modification stats, armor, and commander guide. As you can see here, secondary in the first slot. Propulsion, concealment, and then, of course, secondary reload. That one is a little bit questionable. You could probably go for the gun reload. However, you do already have a pretty decent reload, considering that these guns are 305 millimeter. Survivability is 72,900 with a 20% torpedo reduction. Guns, as we mentioned, 12 by 3 are 4 by 3 so 12 305 millimeter guns with a 17.1 firing range a 22 second reload that's part partly in due to our commander uh, with a 30 second 180 turn time but if you'll notice our secondaries there we're pushing them out to 10.2 so not quite schlieffen levels or you know prince ruprecht levels but you still get some pretty decent range secondaries and the thing that it, it's not just the secondaries it's the torpedoes Somebody made the comparison, you basically get uh, two Oyster Yachtlins on the side of your boat, and you, you almost do. 10 kilometer torpedoes there with an 86 knot speed, that makes hitting torpedo torpedoes, that makes hitting torpedoes much, much easier, as you guys will see in this video. And the AA defense is actually pretty good with some of the best short range AA in the game, 418 DPS there, so that is... I'm, Guessing if we ever get a carrier game, that will probably shred, especially tier 7 carriers. Maneuverability is pretty good. Not the best top speed, but not bad for a battleship either. Uh, kind of a tight turning circle there, and a decent rudder shift as well. Concealment, 13.3. Uh, you're a battleship, battlecruiser type, but let's go ahead and look at the armor here. And this, I'm not going to lie, my first game, we don't put ourselves in the absolute best of positions, but you are truly saved if you get in close and we will show you why in just a second here. 32 bow and stern, which is going to, of course, protect you from everything except for ultimate overmatch. But your casemate, while chunky and, you know, you, you will get a decent amount of damage taken away from that. Your citadel is completely, not completely, but very close, if not below the waterline. On top of that, you have a rather decent uh, turtleback scheme to protect you. And you guys will see that that saves me in this upcoming game here. So a pretty chunky overall package. You want to get this thing in close. The guns, as I was trying to mention earlier as we we're reading the stats, are pretty pathetic. I'm not going to lie. I think I get like one or two salvos that I'm like, yeah, that's what 12 305s should do. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the overview here. And then, of course, the commander. And then we'll get right into the game. Secondary reach, ironclad, and area denial. Yeah, she's, she's pretty much got it all with the exception of the guns like we just mentioned. So um, let's take a look at that commander and then get to the game. But here we are, Mr. Janko Vukovic, the only pan-European battleship commander you have to choose from with his base trait there of stoned skin. Uh, he's unique perk there in the first slot, Reckless Gunman. Of course, Percupine on second thought, as well as Master Mechanic, and then Fight Fire with Fire. I don't even know why I'm running on second thought. I never remember that I have it. <laughs> and there were a few times in this game where I wish I would have remembered that. But anyway, that was our specific build, as well as, of course, having Hipper and Haruna as our inspirations to max out those secondaries. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead and get right into the game. And she's a bruiser, a fun one. Let's go. All right, guys, let's get right into it here. Carl the 14th on Haven, our very first game of the update. And what a perfect map to bring in the new update than Haven, as that was one of the maps that I had been clamoring for in the CC Discord to be changed. And partly in due to our efforts, Wargaming even said, uh, we have gotten the map, or the spawns rather, changed just a little bit to ensure more balanced and even gameplay. And of course, what we mean by that is those ships are now out there on the flank, evenly spaced throughout the map instead of being all clumped up here in the side. Why that ever happened, I don't know. But anyway, it's a little ironic as those ships end up sitting out there for a while, but I'm glad that the spawns have changed. It's going to provide some new and interesting and different gameplay, which 
just keeps the game from becoming old. But anyway, we decided to kind of sit in the middle here, and that is when we become detected, which of course lets us know there is a destroyer most likely pushing our side over here on C. And that is about the time where I realize our own destroyer is AFK. So <laughs> glorious first game of the update. The dude literally just got the game downloaded to go AFK. You got to love it. But we are in this defensive position here, and that's when I realized there is a rock in front of me. <laughs> good news is we are angled, and like we mentioned, our armor is pretty good. There was a decent salvo. 9k, you know, for, for 8 hits is not the best, I guess, outing, but you, with your 22 second reload, if you can do that every, you know, 22 seconds, you're going to be getting a decent damage total. Uh, we go ahead and launch our torpedoes into the sea cap, as we have seen that it is starting to tick red, as well as the Bravo cap here. So both destroyers are in their respective caps, and we are a destroyer down. So we're definitely going to have to do some heavy lifting in order to even out this game. I don't know why it's... I feel like it's always destroyer players who are the ones who are AFK. But anyway, this is when we decided to switch up to the HE for a few reasons. Number one, of course, we have those destroyers in those caps. But number two, I wanted to see what it was going to do. Um, we, we didn't really have the appropriate targets for our AP. And here is where I'm just utterly disappointed, not only with the accuracy, but with just the you know, amount of pen, I guess, or overall damage. But alas, we are doing our job in the middle here, attracting a bunch of damage while also trying to support our team as best we can. Sometimes, and, and this is definitely going to be, uh, you know, a play it by ear situation, especially on the, you know, with the new spawns on Haven. When you spawn in the middle, sometimes it's good to go to the right or go to the left and support your flank. And in this situation, sometimes it's good to just hold the middle. Now, we are definitely not doing too much in this particular moment. However, if you guys just, if you just let the game play out, we rack up a pretty incredible damage total and, you know, will our team towards victory. And that is when the Friesland and the Bravo cap becomes detected. This is where I wish I would have remembered I have on second thought. We could have shot him with HE instead of AP. However, uh, we still get a few to connect as well as a few secondary hits. However, he is absolutely abusing our other destroyer. And there is, I, I think, a few enemies fired on him as well. If only our destroyer, our other destroyer would have not been AFK. But regardless, we did a, a good chunk of damage to him, and that is when we notice a you know a good amount of the enemy battleships are over there, on that far side of B, and so that's what we're going to go support. We've got two cruisers and a battleship over here on this side, uh, on C, as we get <laughs> the worst salvo of the game. I think I all twelve were online. They just six went high, six went low, and I'm like, yeah, this ship is definitely going to need to be played in close as. That salvo was pretty abysmal right there. And I know you're kind of looking at my score and in the game, and you're like, Aaron, do you do you really kind of pull off this high caliber, excellent finishing gameplay? Well, yes, we do. Just wait, just give us a moment here. Because at this point, I decide I'm looking at my hydro range here, but I decide that we're going to go in for the brawl. We can see that that Friesland is in his smoke screen trying to gun uh, our Schroeder there. So we're going to go support him uh, as well as support that weak side there who is kind of just backing off. And, you know, if we get into the Bravo cap here, we get this destroyer down. We will have beautiful broadsides and be in secondary range with a little bit of island cover for the mass of their fleet over there uh, on the what, south side of Bravo. At which point I get another salvo on another Carl the 14th, which again, I wish I would have had my remember that I have on second thought as we get another <laughs> pathetic, pathetic salvo there. Um, but it doesn't matter because we're going to go ahead and miss the follow-up salvo. Oh man, at this point I was like, yep, this thing is garbage. It's, it's bad. But like I said in our review in the beginning there, you're not playing for your main guns. You're playing for your secondaries and your torpedoes. That was a pretty accurate salvo, however, it didn't matter. We just needed to connect one or two there, and we get that free slant off the board for kill number one. And again, as we mentioned, we're going to go ahead and move in here. I'm just keeping the HE loaded at this point. I, I probably should have had the AP. It's one of those situations where, if you remember you have on second thought, it's going to suit you much better, uh, because we do get a lot of broadsides. But my thought process behind this was, 
I have the HE loaded. I'm going to break secondaries. I'm going to break torpedo modules. I'm also going to be setting fires. However, we don't get that many. Um, and the reason that we want to set fires is, of course, we have pretty decent secondaries as well as our complement of torpedoes and them being 10 kilometers in range. As you can see here, we're trying to see what those battleships are doing. If we can connect one or two, get a flood, then we connect a fire. That's going to be a huge chunk of damage uh, that is going to be missing from those battleships. Well guys, it looks like I'm going to have to leave you. I thought I had enough time to finish this video before work. We, we tried to get up a little bit early, but we're going to go ahead and let the game finish out. No comms. It's a fun one. I know you guys are looking at this like, oh, he's only got 27,000 damage. I thought he said he gets 200 in the thumbnail. Oh, uh, Mr. C's the uh, clickbait guy. Well, we actually do, and it's a fun one here. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> it's one of those games where you kind of look back at your play and you're like, yeah, did I play this the absolute best? Maybe not, but uh, it, it we did enough to get the win, and it was a fun game. I really enjoy this ship. So I'll see you guys maybe at the end. If not, leave a like, leave a subscription, or subscribe if you're not already. All of that YouTuber gabagool. I'll see you guys later. I'm out. Peace. Problem solved, sir. Torpedoes direct front. destroyed. Battleship destroyed. Torpedoes dead ahead. Battle ends in five sir. minutes. Thank you.
But there we have it guys, 202,000 for our very first game. Four kills, just missing out on the crack in there. We almost had six, and I thought our destroyer was going to throw it at the end, but yes. And of course, because secondaries don't give us appropriate XP, I think we were robbed a little bit on XP, a solo cap, a few defense, 2550 there, but it doesn't matter. A fun game nonetheless. And that is the Carl the 14th. I've got to go to work. I love you guys. Hopefully I'll be on tonight. I'm going to be hotel living for the next couple days, so probably no streams. But uh, yeah, love you guys and gals. I'm out. Peace.